The society says that our women should be liberated. Yes, when the women are liberated, do they follow the covenant of God? No, they don't follow the covenant of God. They are left to their reprobate minds. They are left uh, to practice the uh, things which are conflicting with uh, good guidance. And yes, they are deceived. But I don't want you to be deceived. I want you to be guided on the part of that which is right and righteous. So if you want to understand what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a wife, and how the marriage union is necessary for you to coexist together in one accord with your husband, then stick around as we get on the inside to discuss uh, marriage or mirage. Let us uh, move in on the inside as we discuss these matters expeditiously. Now that you're here, we want to thank you for spending some quality time with us again here on Wife Only. Today is going to be a special day as we discuss uh, these matters which are very prudent for us to understand uh, and understand it in such a manner that we can live it within our lives. So the society wants women to be liberated, but when women are liberated, they lose their protection. And we want as men or women to be protected. And as such, we ask them to humble themselves, to submit, and to let go of their selfish desires as they unify with their husband going with one vision in accordance to the will of God. We don't want them to be deceived. We don't want them to be naive to what the world has to offer. We want them to make uh, rational decisions. But in order for them to make rational decisions, they have to understand the consequences of the decision that they are going to make and the consequences of the decision that they did not make. Let us turn our attention to Ephesians 5 and verse 22. It says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. Yes, we understand that unto your own husband, not your friend's husband, not um, anybody else's husband, not uh, the her boss, not anyone else but her own husband as unto the Lord. You see, and it says that God... Uh, or God is a jealous God. So that there's something that we need to explore in further detail. It says, for the husband is the head of the wife. Yes, I know that women don't like to hear that the husband is the head of the wife, but the husband is indeed the head of the wife. It's not what I say, it's what the Word of God says. If you have a problem with it, you have to go to the Word of God and tell the Word of God that you have a problem with the Word of God. And then you're going to have to say, hey, I don't want to receive the benefit and the blessings that come from the Word of God, because that is basically what you're saying. You cannot argue with me. You have to argue with whosoever will allow you to argue with them. And he says, even as Christ is the head of the church, why would we want the, the church to be head of the Christ? We don't want to facilitate the vicarious philosophy because God is above man at all times. So the God of the universe needs to be the head of the church. And he is a savior of the body. We don't want any man to save us because man can't even save himself. Only God can save us. Therefore, as a church is subject unto God, so let the wives be subject to their own husband. Yes, indeed, it is good to be subjected to your own husband. And this is a pleasure because it is uh, uh, safer to be subjected to one man than to be subjected to multiple partners, multiple men, all ravishing your body, all desecrating your temple. That there is a, a, a disgrace. And I don't want you to have a disgraceful existence. So it says, therefore, that a church, as a church is subject unto Christ, so that the wives subject to their own, their own husband. Yes, submission is necessary. And each woman have one authorized orifice for the purpose of procreation. And as such, she only needs one man, which is her husband. Now it says, husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church. Yes, the Bible says that the husband should love his wife as Christ loves the church. And is that true? Yes, the husband should love his wife. But the husband cannot love the wife unless he knows Christ. He has a saving relationship with Christ. So many persons don't even understand the concept of love. And they say that they are in relationship and the relationship is not working out. And they thought that the person loved them. But the person doesn't even understand. If the person doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, 
If the person doesn't have a relationship with their God, their maker, their king, how can they express love unto you? Remember, God is love. If you love me, you keep my commandment. So if someone doesn't know God, how can you expect them rationally to love you? They don't even love themselves. They don't even know themselves. Because in order to know yourself, you have to know the one who created you. So this there is a conundrum. And many people fall in the trap of believing that the romance style ideation that the uh, Hollywood or the Nollywood or the Jollywood presents to you is actually true. But that there is a fabrication. They present to you a fantasy so they can sell you a desire that does not exist. When the reality is far from the truth. So we don't want you to live in a fantasy because you'll die in the fantasy zone. We want you to enjoy reality as intended. So even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, a man is willing to give himself for his wife. A man is willing to give up everything that he has so that his wife, his family can be protected and provided for and secured. Yes, that is the kind of man that we are talking about. That is the only man that exists. So it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So yes, the man is a priest. The man has to distill the word of God unto the woman. That he might present himself a glorious church, not having spots or wrinkles or any such thing, but that... Uh, it uh, should be holy and without blemish. We as men, you know, all men desire to have a woman that is pure, a woman that is circumspect, a woman that has a virtue within her because we want the virtuous woman. Many people like looking at the voluptuous, but they don't want the voluptuous woman because the voluptuous women are generally prostitutes. They prostitute themselves. They may be in a relationship, but they are still prostitutes. They dress provocatively, but they are still prostitutes. They claim to have a husband, but they are still a prostitute. And most men or most males like to look at the voluptuous, but they don't desire the voluptuous to be a wife. That is why you may have males engaging in relations with certain kind of women or females, but they never get married to them because they are not at the standard that they desire to spend the rest of their life with. And they are not at the standard that they desire to have children with. And that is what uh, happens in the society. But that is not what we want for you. We want you to retain your virtue as Christ desires. So as you can present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, and your husband will indeed be pleased with that offering. And it says, So ought men to love their wives as their own body. Yes, the husband should love his wife as his own body. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Remember, the two are one. So if the man would not beat his wife because he loves himself and he doesn't want to be beaten, the man would ensure that he corrects his wife. Yes, but that correction should be in love, not in abuse. So it, it is a dynamics that exists. But if you don't understand the principles of God, then you're going to be falling in a ditch. And then error will fall in and then you find yourself in a relationship that is, was a facade and presents to you that it was a mirage and not a marriage. For no man ever yet hate his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, eat even as the Lord the church. So yes, the husband is going to nourish his wife, going to cherish her, going to treat her as the bride that she is. For we are members of one body, of his flesh, and of his bone. So yes, the man and the woman, two, become one. One flesh, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And that is a principle that engages or that exists in marriage. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Yes, Christ and the church coexist together. Christ gives the instruction, the church carries it out. But sometimes the church is a little bit rebellious, but Christ has to put the church in check. And sometimes the man has to put his wife in check because she may be going out of order. And it is his responsibility to ensure that she operates within the confines of the biblical guidance. It says, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife 
see that she reverenced her husband. Hallelujah. Uh, when I talk about uh, a woman, a wife, it is a great and awesome responsibility. It's a lovely responsibility. A woman, a wife should reverence her husband. It means that she should be willing to serve her husband. She should be willing to do what is right to her husband. She should operate in accordance to holy guidance with her husband. I know that this information has been here, but you may not have uh, seen it or explored it in this manner. But yes, this is very important, very critical for us to understand. A woman is important in a relationship. She has her own role. She has her own responsibility. She has her own capacity of operating. And the man, likewise, has his own capacity. They may be operating in different dynamics, but they are operating together on one accord. And that there is what builds and develops a solid foundation for a marriage relationship. Thank you for spending that time with us where we discuss matters of prudence and matters of importance. Now that we have come to this pause, I pray that you were indeed blessed. At this time, we're going to be signing out from Wife Only. This is Kareem Ainsley, the Wife Lifestyle Strategist. And as always, be the wife you were meant to be. And don't forget to share your blessings with others. Be blessed.